you know what time it is? It's time for another episode of the Mind of George show. And this morning, my mind is going crazy with all the most amazing things ever. It is only like 7.30 in the morning, and I feel like I've already won my day. I got up at 3.45 a.m., went to the gym, got to the gym at 4, finished my workout at 5.30, came home, read for 30 minutes, journaled for 10, then my three-year-old son woke up at 6.15 and said, Daddy, I want to work out with you, which of course melted my absolute heart. So I threw my phone down. We went on a bike ride around the neighborhood. And I want you to picture this, ready? So this is what I want you to picture. Picture a three-year-old, right? Three and a half um, going on 13 or 30, depends on his mood, riding his bike. He's got this huffy bike with training wheels and we're getting ready to pop the training wheels off, right? He's got this Paw Patrol helmet on, this tie-dye shirt, black shorts, and little Paw Patrol shoes. And I mean, like, it is the cutest little thing ever. Like, the cutest little thing ever. He's ripping through the neighborhood at, like, 10 miles an hour on this bike. And I'm, like, nervous because he pedals this thing so fast that I'm, like, he's going to forest gump the training wheels off of this bike. And so he's like, Daddy, I want to work out. So normally we go on a walk around the neighborhood and he starts riding. And he's like, Daddy, I know you worked out, but you need to work out more. You need stronger muscles. Run, Daddy. Run, Daddy. Run. And so I have this little amazing ball of deliciousness, like this gooey, adorable child of mine looking as adorable as possible, but literally yelling at me like he was one of my drill instructors in boot camp telling me I had to run, I had to go faster, I had to make my muscles stronger to be like him. And then I came home and I decided to sit down and record this podcast. And so that's my whole story. But my heart's super full and I'm super happy. And I hope that brightened up your day a little bit because we're going to talk about brightening up other people's day to day. And we're going to talk about social media marketing, social media, like call it what it is. It's just social media. It's a place to connect with people. It's a place to communicate with people. And if I hear one more time, is social media marketing worth it? Should I be on social? Should I blah, 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 blah? Yes. If your customers are on social media, yes. The one thing about marketing that a lot of people miss is that marketing isn't bringing people where you want them to go. Marketing is putting yourself in the situations where the attention already is. So yes, if you have a clothing line tailored for 18 to 24 year old children, or I guess I call them children because I could be their father at this point, 18 to 24 year old people, then there's a high likelihood that in order to be successful online, you're going to have to be on Instagram and TikTok. If you have an audience of 50 plus people that are into reading and long form copy and content, uh, could be gardening, could be cat care, it doesn't really matter there's a high likelihood that you're going to have to be on Facebook. Now, I want to say this because you don't have to be anywhere. But if your business model, if your product, if anything you have, your service is predicated on utilizing the power of social media, which means you're not doing a lot of in-person stuff, you're not running billboards or radio ads or television, or you don't have other acquisition channels, or you don't have an unlimited budget to just go buy traffic or do earned traffic, you're going to have to create some of your own owned media, which means you're going to have to be on social media. And so When I say this, when I hear this question, and I get asked this question a lot, is social media marketing worth it? It's not only worth it, it's mandatory. It's mandatory for all the reasons that I listed above. We live in a time where trust is low, and it takes longer to earn, right? And so if you can imagine the power of social media, like go back 40 years, If somebody walked into, and let's just pretend, let's just, let's play pretend. Let's pretend Apple, the store, Apple, iPhones, iPads, computers existed 40 years ago and there was no internet, there was no anything, but people were just as interested in Apple. They would walk into a store, pick up an iPod and be like, oh my God, I want this. I'm not sure. And then they would leave. There's a high likelihood that the only other touch point that they would get back with that iPod would be when their parents dropped them off at the mall again or potentially 
they saw a television which wasn't in most homes, and so they would have had to heard it on the radio, which isn't going to be a prevalent feature, right? But now, somebody walks into an Apple store, and they see an iPod. Within a week, they can have 800 touch points tilting that factor forward or backwards of do they want it or not want it, right? Think about all of the ways in which we speed up the process of touch points and safety measures, like safety measures being how many touch points required to feel safe to make a decision because of the power of communication. Because of that power, we have the ability to reach out and touch people a lot more. And because of that power, there is a whole lot of mistrust happening in the market and the buying cycle, conversion cycle, or whatever you want to call it, the customer journey cycle can take upwards of 100, 150, 200 touch points. And so not only are we required to be on social media, but we're also required to look at it like it's a long game, like it's a game of chess. Because every single thing that you do is either helping a customer or potential customer move one step closer to you or move one step further away from you. And that is solely predicated on how you show up consistently and congruently. And if they are the right attractive character or the right customer at the right time, but either way, you have to show up consistently and congruently. Now, here's the beautiful part about social media, though. Once you earn somebody's trust, i.e. they follow you, they fall in love with you, become an advocate for you, you've broken down that barrier, you've shown up consistently, and they've chosen to engage with you in one way, shape, or form, it can be kept for life if you're consistent. Because now you have a pre-existing relationship. You have a paradigm formed in your relationship. Like look at some of your behaviors, right? So if you're listening to this, watching this, whatever you're doing, Um, Like I'm drinking a cup of coffee right now. I'm drinking a cup of coffee from a coffee shop down the street from me called Intaza. Intaza does not run paid ads. Um, I go there every single morning. I've probably sent a hundred people to Intaza to get coffee because of word of mouth marketing. Every time they're in town, every time it's here, I post about it just naturally because I'm there. And then About every two days, I'll pop on social media and I'll see an image of a new drink they made or a wellness thing that they added or a new menu item. And literally, I'm like, oh my God, I got to go back. And here's the funny part is I already go every morning, but now I go in and I'm like, hey, now can I not only get my Americano, but can you please add that breakfast skillet? Can you please add that smoothie? And it's just another touch point that helps me continue to keep them front of mind, promote them and talk about them in between my trips to the store. And so when you look at your consumption, when you look at what you engage with, there's brands and products that you own that you've probably never engaged with on social, but you still post about them all the time. There's other brands that you own and you love that you engage with them quite often. But social media is a tool that we utilize all the time. And so our audience and our customers will utilize it as well. And so when we're there, when we're consistent, when we're showing up, They have a place to engage with us, but we're also feeding the quote unquote machine and the machine being one of the five things that people will post about, which are humor, controversy, credibility, education, and social status. Uh, That comes from Jonah Berger uh, in the book Contagious, which is a required read in my world. And so go read that one. Okay. And so social media is one of the three main important channels needed for both earning and keeping that trust. Okay. Now, when we think about traffic, like IE attention or or customers or potential customers into your world, there are only three types of traffic. There's owned traffic, earned traffic, and paid traffic. And I'm going to have to do another episode on all of those things, right? But when you think about social media, social media is one cog in your wheel. Your website would be your owned traffic, something you owned. Your email list would be your owned traffic, something you own. And social media helps goes and reaches people where they are to bring them into some of your own traffic. Now, in my opinion, I don't think we should ever consider social media owned traffic because we don't own the platforms. Facebook does, Instagram does. Well, I guess Facebook owns both of them. Google owns YouTube, TikTok, you know, blah, blah, blah. But we can utilize those to bring them into our own traffic. And so social media is one of the three main channels because you build a website, 
right? And then you have an email list and then you have to decide where to reach out and touch people. And social media happens to be one of the biggest free pools of attention to find your ideal buyers or ideal customers and bring them into your world. And it's a place where you can have daily touch points with people, giving them value, being in a relationship with them. And those buying decisions that people make are based on their touch points, right? And when you think about a buying decision, a buying decision doesn't happen just because somebody sees a Facebook ad, right? It doesn't happen because they see a car commercial, right? It doesn't happen because they test drive a car. It doesn't happen just because they see a Yelp review of a restaurant. There are different touch points across different platforms that all inform a customer journey. And so you literally just heard me talk about my coffee. And I could have said, you know, in Taza, but there's no in Taza near you. But I said black Americano or an Americano, which is black, right? A hot Americano. And you just heard me say the word hot Americano. And you're like, God, that sounds good right now. And you might forget about it, right? But then you'll be driving down the street and you'll hear a commercial on the radio for Starbucks. And you'll think coffee, you'll think Americano. Then you'll log into social media and you'll see somebody else posted a Frappuccino at Starbucks. And it will remind you that you either want a coffee or you want an Americano. Then you'll be driving. You might drive by a local coffee shop and you'll be like, you know what? I don't want to support the man. I'm going to go to the local coffee shop. And you walk in and get an Americano. And all of those touch points happened in many different places to lead to the same place. And so social media, social media marketing, the way that you use social media is just one avenue. It's one pillar per se in the multiple pillars that happen in a customer journey. And it is required if you're going to capitalize on the attention and the customers that are on social media. But I have a warning and I'm going to take a sip of my coffee. This coffee, by the way, is so good. It is so good. You ever have that when you... When you get a cup of coffee, if you drink hot coffee, if you drink cold coffee, this doesn't apply. But I drink coffee because of the flavor and the experience, right? The smell, the aroma, the memory, the habit, the, you know, leaving my house for 20 minutes to get out, you know, and have some me time. Um, But I love hot coffee. But I always hate when I get that Americano and I know it's 204 degrees and I got to wait, right? And then if I go in to take a sip too early... If I go in to take a sip too early, it's like a disappointment, right? I can burn my tongue and then the rest of my coffee won't taste good, right? And then if I wait too long to take a sip, by the time I get to the bottom of the cup, it's already cold and that first sip is kind of like lukewarm or like I missed that point. I want to call that point like the sharp point, like the sharp point of heaven, the sharp point of the nectar of the gods, like piercing my taste buds and filling my soul with warmth. That's a pretty vivid description of coffee. Um, but I just took the first sip of my coffee and I literally, the, the nectar of the gods and the gods that created coffee are shining down on me today because that was a perfect sip. It was like just hot enough that I was like, oh, that's hot, but I can keep it and drink it and it feels good going down knowing I'm going to get through the rest of this cup. So thank you for sharing this cup of coffee with me this morning. It makes me happy. So now back to the warning. Do not be, and I mean do not be, like the 99% of other business owners who just go on social media to burn relationships with potential customers. There's a very important distinction here. Your job on social media is not to be in a dictatorship. Your job on social media is to be in a two-way value-based relationship. And so what does that mean? That means that it's probably not a good idea to go on 27 platforms at once, to spend one minute a day on Twitter, one on TikTok, one on Instagram, one on Snapchat, one on MySpace, one on Facebook, one on Reddit, one on Discord, one on YouTube, one on blah. It's better to pick the platform where both you feel comfortable and you're not always going to feel comfortable, but where you feel comfortable Maybe, you know, when you wake up in the morning, the first app you use is Instagram and the second one is Facebook and the third one is Twitter. And then where your customers are that matches you, your brand and the story you want to tell. And so then maybe your customers are very visual based. Maybe you're a food blogger. Well, that's an Instagram one for sure. Facebook, Facebook would be number two, but Instagram would be number one. So if you're like, oh, I know Instagram, they're on Instagram 
I have a very visual based product. I can tell stories with it. I can use Instagram reels. I can use Instagram stories. I can do live cooking demos. I'm going all the way in on Instagram. And so it's better to go 100% deep on one channel instead of being surfacy and shallow on multiple channels. You cannot build authentic relationships with your customers if you are surfacy and shallow. And so wherever you are in your business, wherever you use social media, wherever you use social media marketing, you need to make sure that wherever you are, you are going as deep as you can possibly go to ensure that you are utilizing the platform with everything that it has. And I've done this multiple times. When I ran the food blog, I built my Instagram organically to 150,000 followers and generated seven figures a year organically, but I had one rule. And my rules were very simple from the beginning. I'm going to post every day. I'm going to give away everything that I have and I'm going to respond to every single comment. And I kept those rules for nine years and I'm back at it again, back on Instagram. I've changed my rules to where... Now I'm going to post every day and I'm going to give away all the value and all the content so there are no questions and then I just want people to engage. I want people to share it, save it, and utilize it, which is why we're making carousels and step-by-steps. Now, of course, I'll answer questions, but now I'm like, nope, I want you to take this, put it into practice in your business. And so for me, I'm going all in on Instagram. And if you go look at it, it looks like a candy shop threw up on it because I love bright colors. And so now my Instagram looks pink and yellow And I'm playing with different things so I can make it fun because it's something I enjoy. I can go all the way in on it, add as much value as I can and be there. And I'm not worried about Facebook or Twitter or TikTok or any of that stuff. I'm going all the way in. And so you want to make sure that either you or maybe somebody on your team or somebody in your life is there and dedicated so that if you're going to be on a platform, you're going to go all in. And and I want to make this caveat you have to think like this too because Instagram isn't one platform. Facebook isn't one platform. There's like five micro platforms inside of Instagram. Think about it. You have your Instagram feed, right? Then you have Instagram stories. Then you have Instagram lives. Now you have Instagram reels, okay? And that's just kind of getting you started. Then you have paid Instagram, right? We would take organic content and boost it or not boost it. I hate that word. Oh, Facebook screwed that word up for me. Not boost it, run an ad to it, right? But if you think about Instagram just in that lens, there's four different platforms inside of Instagram. And so in order to be effective, you have to utilize them because you have different audience members on different parts of the platform for different reasons. And if you think about Facebook, you have a Facebook page, Facebook profile, Facebook group, right? Then you have Facebook stories, Facebook lives. And so really, when you just think about those two, there's probably 10 micro platforms between those two large platforms. And so I would highly recommend that you pick one and you go all in on one. And if you look, you look at the people you idolize, the businesses that you look up to, some of the most successful e-commerce businesses, they might be on all social media, but I guarantee you one of their channels is glaringly bigger, more authentic, better converting, more engaged than any other channel. Give me a big influencer and they might have a couple platforms, but one of them is massively larger than the other ones. And so build that one, go all the way as deep as you can on that one. And so here I'm going to give you some tangible tips on how to increase your brand awareness with social media. Cause that's what this entire episode is about. And I think I said it in the intro. I just forget to say the exact word, but how can you increase your brand awareness utilizing social media? Okay. So number one is you have to know your captain's assessment. And so for those of you listening to this that don't know what that is, that is my version or our version in in our world of the quote unquote avatar sheet. But it goes a lot deeper than a 35 year old soccer mom of two. It gets into external beliefs, internal beliefs, and paradigm beliefs. So basically, you know what to give people with what they want to deliver what they need and take them on a journey. And so we help you with all of this. And just so everybody knows, all of this is on mindofgeorge.com, the website where the podcast is. We actually broke that captain's assessment down and put it in a video training for free as part of a a five or seven day challenge. I think it's a seven day where we go over that plus your lighthouse, plus your map of modalities, which is basically you figuring out who your avatar is, who you are, and what content you're going to create for them to design your social media strategy. So if you haven't done that yet, go to www.mindofgeorge.com and then opt in for the seven-day challenge and I will take you through it on video 
um, walking you through how you can utilize it, right? So number one is you have to know your captain's assessment, which means you have to know your avatar. Because if you are, uh, if your avatar are um, women who knit socks for their cats, and that's what they're focused on, and you have to know the modalities of that, they might not be interested in you posting your morning coffee, or they might, or they might not be interested in you posting your dinner, or they might if you do it while crocheting at the table. But you have to know your avatar because it doesn't do you any good if you think what you're going to post is for them. You must know. And they will tell you, but you have to know them to learn what they want. There's no point in being on social media while trying to build a brand or build a business if you don't know your avatar. And if you are, then you have to be honest with yourself and you're just on social media for you. You want to document your life. You want to post on social. But in that sense, you have to understand that you're not going to get a following and you're not going to get conversions because it's irrelated, irrelated, irrelevant. I just try to combine two words, unrelated and irrelevant. So we'll just go back because if you're posting about things that your audience doesn't want, it is unrelated to your topic or your expertise and it will be irrelevant to them because they're following you to learn about X. Now you might get a following talking about stuff that your avatar might not be concerned about, but then you're going to have a following for attention and dopamine hits on whatever you're sharing. And then when you're like, oh, buy my product, they're like, why would I buy your product? I didn't even know you had a product or that's not what I'm interested in. And so you have to be really honest with yourself, knowing your avatar, knowing your messaging, knowing where you want to take people. Okay. Number two, you have to create a value-based journey from your profile that brings people closer to becoming a customer. One thing I can't stand about Instagram profiles and someone adds like LinkedIn profile and they link to like 38 different places. If you know your avatar and you know what they want, offer that one thing in your bio. So when they consume your content, they find a story, they find a live, they find a post, they've been following you, but this one post tilted them over and they're like, I get to look in their profile and they look in their profile. They have the easiest thing to choose, which is the one thing that promises what you're an expert at that they get to then click on and go take that journey with. And it needs to be for that customer. It needs to be for your ability to help them, right? And so what you really need to do is you really need to know who the person you help is, the problem you solve, and the promise you make, right? And so you may say like, I help entrepreneurs ethically build and scale their companies from home in 20 minutes or less, right? That would be something I would say, right? Or I help blank, right? So you have to know the people you help. You have to know the problem you solve and then the promise that you make. And my buddy Clay, um, you know, he calls this the perfect intro. This is what he came up with. And then um, his wifey, I don't think they're married yet, uh, but they're amazing people. Angie Lee is absolutely amazing at teaching this as well. But you have to know that when you're building your social, that your social media is like light shining in people's eyes, right? And that's a good thing, right? It's getting their attention. It's bringing them closer. But once they're in, they have to have an easy, logical next step to get more value to basically take that journey. So you want to make sure you're creating a value-based journey from your profile that bring people closer to becoming an ideal customer, okay? Number three, post relevant content consistently, 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 consistently. Like I will say that until I am blue in the face. And I always use this analogy. Friends, the sitcom would have never been as popular as it is if they didn't post the episodes at the same time on the same day every week. Matter of fact, Most of the television shows that you see, podcasts that you listen to, people that you follow wouldn't be where they are if they were inconsistent. Consistency from you is what allows your customers to collect the touch points required to feel safe to make a commitment to you. Consistency for you is what keeps you accountable to what you're creating and basically guarantees your success as long as you maintain the course and make adjustments as needed. But I will tell you something. You can't win the game if you're not on the field. And so literally Jim Quick, amazing friend of mine and master master of the brain, always says strive for progress because perfection doesn't exist. So strive for progress. So be consistent. I guarantee you that what you have to share, what you have to post is going to help somebody. 
but you have to post it and share it in order for that to happen. And so you have to be consistent. Set yourself up to be consistent. Set containers, set schedules, create content in advance. You have to be consistent. Consistency is key and it will help on so many fronts, okay? So then number four, tell people exactly how they can put content to use. So what you share with them, tell them how they can put it to use how they can take the next step on their customer journey and how they can support the brand. This goes back to the captain's assessment from number one. We have a column in that called ask. Once you take somebody on a journey from their before state over an objection to their after state, now it's time to ask. When you're thinking about your social content, when somebody consumes your information, if they just consume the information and do nothing with it and aren't guided on the next step, you just made their situation worse. That was just noise and noise wastes time, right? So you always have to have a next step. Even if you're like, hey, today I want you to compliment yourself, right? Once you're done, post a comment of the favorite one that you said or how you feel or write it down on a sticky and post it on your whiteboard, right? Or here's this recipe, uh, save it and make it today. Those subtleties are what is guiding and leading people on a journey, Calls to action are not buy my product, click here. Calls to action are you understanding your role and responsibility as a leader. And if people are following you, you are a leader. Your job is to guide them and lead them on their next steps. And so make sure that you are telling people how to use your content. Make sure you are guiding them on the next steps required to be successful on your social media. Which then brings us to number five. Ready? The last one coming in with a bang. Use social media the way it was intended to be used. Respond to comments. Leave comments on other people's posts. Be engaged in groups, communities, and followings. Be there to connect and add value, not to get something from others. And if you think about it, if you think about the way in which most people use social media now, and you take it off of Instagram and you put that person into a restaurant with you and 20 of your friends, would you even let them stay in that restaurant? Like, can you imagine them coming in the door? You're there with all of your friends. Okay, there's 20 of you sitting in a restaurant. Envision this. Me, because I'll, I'll poke fun at myself. I would never do this, but this is what it's going to sound like. Me, I bust through the doors. I'm like, hey guys, listen. Email marketing is not dead. You need to do boom, boom, and boom. The end. And then I just stand there, dead silent, like dead silent. And then all of you come and ask me questions. So first I like announced my presence about me, right? You'd be like, what are you doing? You interrupted me. Second, maybe I got your attention and you started engaging a little bit. You came to ask me questions. This is my favorite part. So 20 of you come and ask me questions and then I just stare you dead in the face. I don't respond. I don't engage. I don't do anything, right? Nothing. And then I don't respond at all. And then I wait five minutes after I've ignored all of you and I'm like, hey guys, listen, we talked about email yesterday and I'm going to help you fix it. But here's what I need. I need every one of you to give me your credit cards right now. I'm going to charge you $397, not tell you what I'm going to charge you for and expect you to trust me even though I ignored you and didn't answer your questions five minutes ago. Like, are you kidding me? We shouldn't do it on social media either. Social media is not a different world. It's a tool in our world that allows us to connect more frequently with ease to help people achieve their goals or for us to collect touch points or for us to build relationships, but it is called social media, not dictator media. And so those are the things that you can do to help increase your brand awareness when it comes to social media. And so is social media marketing worth it? Yes, it's mandatory. I can't think of one instance where a company, an influencer, a business owner could not win by being on social media. There are 8 million benefits that I can't even unpack in this whole episode, but I think that that's enough. So the five things I want you to do to use social media to increase your brand awareness, number one, know your captain's assessment. Remember, go to mindofgeorge.com. It's linked right there, the seven-day lighthouse challenge, I think we called it. Number two, create a value-based journey from your profile that brings people closer to becoming your customer. Number three, post relevant content consistently, consistently. Hold yourself accountable 
so that your customers or potential customers can feel safe and held accountable to take an action to actually come into your world. Number four, tell people exactly how they can use your content. Give them calls to action. Lead them. Guide them. That's your job. And then number five, use social media the way it was intended to be used. Respond to comments. Leave comments. Build community. Build community. That is the only way in which this wins. And you know what? I have to find this quote. I have to find this quote. I wrote it down yesterday and I'm going to look for it while you listen to this because it is such a powerful quote that I can't even like do it justice if I try to rip it off the top and I know who said it. So I'm literally actively on Google over here and it's about community. Uh, build community. Let's see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. <sighs> Where are you? Ready? Here we go. This is the quote I want to leave you with today. This is from one of my favorite musicians. His name is Satsang, S-A-T-S-A-N-G. I listen to his music every day. And this quote is what I'm going to leave you with. Are you ready? Oh, the fool who builds fast and high, those towers of isolation. It's the wise who build slow and wide, the foundations of community. So that's today's episode, guys. It's been absolutely amazing. I love you. I'm sure there's an outro coming because I have to go record one. But please, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you haven't left a review, please leave a review of this podcast for me. It would help an immense amount if there's been any value, any nuggets for you. Please leave them in the comments so other can leave them in the comments. Leave them in the review in the comments of the review so others can find it. And make a decision if they like my crazy as much as you do. But other than that, remember that relationships will always beat algorithms. And I will see you in the next episode. Or maybe I won't see you, but maybe you'll hear me. You know, I'll, I'll figure out how I say that after. Have a good day. I love you all.